T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and lift off. Coach on Fire Radio. I am the Good evening. This is Coach on Fire, High Performance Leadership with Stephen Bryant. Here in Fort McMurray, Alberta tonight, we have a special guest. His name is Russell Thomas and a, a good friend of mine, and definitely. Um, so a little bit about uh, something I ran into today, and then we'll get into some of the other things that are really important to, tonight, especially uh, Russell and I and our partnership in the Shining Mickey Awards, but my name is Stephen Bryant, and uh, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, I also have a coaching page, High Performance Coaching with Stephen Bryant, that is uh, on Facebook. You can also look at my photography page, that is Stephen Bryant Photography. You can also find me on LinkedIn, at Stephen Bryant Instagram, PastorMan007, and on Twitter, Steve Bryant007. One of the things I wanted to talk about tonight before we get into the interview is I get a really nice note uh, from one of the people that I interviewed. And actually, this has happened more than once. Is um, I, I think of a, of a quote. It, it deals with successful people help other people become successful. And uh, that is one of my goals. I always have loved to see people become successful. I guess that's part of the passion that I have in the work that I've done in 20 years of being a pastor in New Brunswick in St. John's Newfoundland, uh, a chaplain for the uh, St. John's Maple Leafs, the AHL affiliate of the Toronto Maple Leafs hockey team. Through my work here in Fort McMurray as executive director of the Center of Hope and now executive assistant with Waypoints. And then again, and we'll talk about this a little bit later because Russell is involved with the Shining Mickey Awards. So our guest tonight is the famous Russell Thomas. Russell, it's good to have you with us tonight. It's, it's great, great to be here, Stephen. We do this uh, on a regular basis. I love it. We do. In fact, Russell just interviewed me last week or a week and a half ago on uh, 91.1, the FM station here in town, and the show was called Impact. And uh, Russell, tell me a little bit about that radio program. Uh, yeah, I, I come from a radio background. I, I spent a decade uh, in the radio business when I was much younger and had more hair and was <laughs> 30 pounds lighter. Um, and I, I saw an opportunity to use the radio medium to share stories of what was happening, particularly in our nonprofit sector, or as we like to call it, the social profit sector uh, in Fort McMurray. And it's been a delight uh, interviewing people like yourself and, and so many others over the last two years, really just giving people a platform to tell their story. Uh, I don't think we do that often enough. And everybody has a story. And I, I think it's through the telling of stories that other people can get inspired. And and it's a half-hour weekly show on the local Christian radio station that really is community-focused. And uh, it's really added great value to, I think, the community. And it's added great value to my life as well. It's felt really good to be back on the radio. Mm. So, Russell, you and I would uh, would say the same thing about the uh, telling of a story. What's the importance to you, and what do you feel is the importance to the person telling their story? Well, I think there's been many examples of people that uh, I've interviewed on the show that have been waiting a long time to tell their story and have a platform to do it. Yeah. Um, some of us that are writers and bloggers, it's sort of what we do every day. Or if you're really active on social media, you're telling your story in, in smaller little chunks. But there's a lot of people out there that don't even know how to begin to tell their story. And, and, and I think they don't even realize that by telling their story, they are going to help somebody else. 
Mm -hmm. And I think that that is the driving motivator for those of us that live in the world of storytelling. Uh, I, something will pop into my heart or my mind saying, okay, I got to write about this today. And I know that somewhere out there is somebody that needs to hear that message on that particular day. Mm. Oftentimes I don't find out about who that is, but I trust in completely that, that there is somebody that needs to hear that message at that point in time. And mm. I think I'm just a vessel for whatever the lesson is or the story that I happen to be uh, inspired to tell that day. So, so it goes both ways. I think it helps the people that are listening. I think uh, people are inspired by others and it certainly feels good to me to be, uh, to be that person that just gives a place for those stories to go. Mm. And I think that's so important, Russell, uh, you know, in the work that I've done in, in pastoral ministry and then in my role as an executive director with the center of hope and even before much more before that with, uh, being an outreach coordinator and housing first coordinator is to listen to the stories, as you said, for, for a lot of people that this is the first time they've been able to tell their story. And for me, it has been life changing because I've learned a lot about life and, uh, about other people's lives and how it affects others, including mine. Um, and I have found that that has been very empowering for them to be able to, to, uh, to share that story for the first time. It's almost like the, uh, that aha moment in their life that uh, they, they've been able to, to, uh, to tell that. I was thinking, I was listening to somebody tell about their spiritual journey the other day. And, and what they said was, and it really caught my attention, is that, well, I don't have this, uh, you know, flashing lights and the divine intervention and all this is, you know, it's not an exciting story, but I said, no, but it's, it's your story. And it's special because it's, it involves you. And, uh, and it was interesting as I was sitting across from her and, and somebody else uh, actually at Boston pizza, it was, it, it was almost like that, that light in the eye that, Oh yeah, you're right. It is. So those are the type of, those are the type of encounters that I love in the sense that listening, they've told that story. And then it's almost like that, that, wow, that, that is empowering, you know, to be able to, to, you know, to be able to say that. There's a young fellow in, in the community that you and I live in that passed away quite recently, a, a homeless man. And uh, there were a couple of lovely ladies from the center of hope that came to visit me the other day. And I, I just, I felt inspired to ask them about this young fellow because I remember the day that he first arrived in the community and I started seeing him around and I always wondered like, what is his story? He was a young fellow and he, and he was a very, uh, he looked like a warrior to me, but in the most positive sense of the word. And I, I, I'd always see him and, and he would catch my eye. And so I asked and without giving away any confidences, they were able to share with me, how lovely of a fellow he was, but he had, he had some burdens, you know, he, he had some psychological issues and, and, uh, and, and, you know, he was a person on the street and, and he wasn't famous. He wasn't wealthy. He wasn't successful, but he has a story. And, and I think there's something beautiful about that. And uh, mm. I've always been intrigued by the people around us because everybody every single person has a story that's interesting. Um, it's fun to be part of the process of, of helping them tell their stories. It, it is Russell. And that's one of the things that keeps driving my passion to do what I do. Um, and I remember working at the center of hope uh, before I became executive director. And I think I've told the story to you before is um, the current the past and the current executive director that, that was before me and came after me, Amanda Holloway, just a sweet, uh, sweet uh, person. Um, we had, uh, we have our time together before we actually open up for the uh, patrons. And uh, she was sharing that, uh, you know, we, we have to remember, and, and she said it this way, was the intrinsic value of every human being. Because often these people are, are marginalized. They, um, they're not thought well of uh, the, 
it, and it's difficult sometimes to, to deal with that population. But it was one of those, for me, I guess, of the aha moment in saying, that's right. Uh, we have to be careful with, we need to treat people equally. Yeah. And uh, these people are very, very special. I've had a, a rough life. Um, things happen in life that sometimes they have no control over and, and they are put in that position. So it's one of those, uh, one of those things in my life that, uh, really took heart, uh, to me that, uh, and, and it's interesting because I was, I was a pastor for 20 years before that, but it's not that I didn't know it, but I needed to hear that. And it was one of those, uh, those moments that I thought, this is why I do what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Amen to that. And, and we get to work with people in this sector that take that to heart every day and they, they live it, they mm -hmm. breathe it. And one of the joys of hosting this radio show is that, um, I've been able to hear from people that are, that are on the front lines of giving care to others in the community. And when they share a story of uh, that's particularly meaningful to them, it's like I'm watching a, a thrilling Hollywood movie. Like it just grips me completely. And it's mm. so amazing to watch their, their eyes light up when they tell that story. And mm. uh, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I, I think it's yeah. pretty cool. So, Russell, tell me a little bit about your story, uh, where you're from, and uh, a little bit about your life and to, to where you are today and what's happening. Well, I'm originally from a small town in Saskatchewan, which is a prairie province here in Canada, because I know there's probably a lot of listeners from the United States that are listening. Very small town, a couple thousand people, where nothing ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it did, but it sort it felt like it, it felt like nothing happened, and and you know it was not sheltered. But we didn't see famous people. We didn't have big concerts and stuff like that. It was a small town, and and so our entertainment was building forts in the in the uh, in the forest out back and playing road hockey at forty below, and it was a great way to, to grow up. And, and uh, I left there shortly after high school, as most of us did in a small town. We, we were itching to get out into the real world. And I spent uh, a couple of years, uh, I was a, fa a failed university student. I was an exceptional high school student, top of the class. And then something, <laughs> something happened in <laughs> university where I, that environment just didn't work for me at the time. And I, I was not very successful and eventually recognized that I needed to get into the workforce to sort of get my head together and, Mm. Uh, eventually discovered the radio business purely by happenstance. It wasn't planned. It wasn't something that had been in my head at all. It just happened one day. And I spent the next decade in that business. And from a professional development perspective, it, it was really important because I, I became very comfortable dealing with the public. Uh, I became comfortable speaking in front of large audiences um, interviewing all kinds of different people over the years, planning promotions and learning about marketing and, and communication. And it was, it was a really good decision. And ultimately it, it is what brought me to the city of Fort McMurray sort of towards the tail end of my radio career. Uh, I, I, I knew nothing about this place and then um, a job opened up and I needed something at the time and came up here and, Really, it was the best move I ever made. It really was. And uh, Fort McMurray, uh, for those that are listening that have what Fort McWhat? So Fort McMurray is about four and a half hours north of the city of Edmonton, which you may have heard of. If you haven't heard of Edmonton, I'm sure you've heard of Calgary. It's eight hours north of mm. Calgary. And it is a place... Um, we are fueled by oil. We have a tremendous amount of oil in the ground in this region, and that's what uh, drives our economy. And it's been a good place for me to explore a bunch of different things, because after I left the radio business, I, I sort of got into the professional marketing and communication uh, line of things at a local college and work my way up the ranks as many of us do. You know, you, you're climbing the corporate ladder in your 30s and early 40s. And uh, 
and accumulating wealth and growing a family and those kind of things. But eventually